You might have heard in the last hour the government has confirmed 10 British nationals have died and another six are missing after Hamas's attack on Israel three weeks ago. Well, it comes as two female hostages, 85-year-old Yeheved Lifshitz and 80-year-old Nurit Cooper, were freed by militant group Hamas overnight after Qatar Egyptian med uh, mediation. Sorry. Well, joining us now is Sally Abed, a Palestinian living in Israel and the leader of Obdim Bayachad, a grassroots movement of Jewish and Palestinian citizens working towards peace and equality. Sally, what is your reaction to these past few weeks of conflict? This must be everything that you and your colleagues have worked so, so hard to avoid. Um, yes, uh, we are all very, very devastated. Um, uh, you know, both uh, here within the Israeli society, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, the human loss. We have experienced it from many of our colleagues and our uh, partners and peers who have been deeply impacted uh, by the attack uh, on October 7th. We are also obviously impacted uh, by uh, everything that is happening uh, since then within Israel. Uh, and we are deeply, deeply devastated uh, for what is happening in uh, Gaza right now. Um, I think uh, what we're trying to do here uh, within Israel is uh, understand how we can uh, hold, um, you know, both sides and the human loss uh, um, uh, that we are all enduring, the two peoples are enduring um, in one side uh, and really understand how we can move forward from there. Um, Sally, um, really good to have you on talk today. Thank you for, for joining us this morning. It's very interesting. We've had a lot of uh, rhetoric from both sides, really. Um, last week fascinated me because we spoke to the Red Cross in Israel and the Green Cross, I think, in Palestine. The Red Cross, um, in, yeah. And I just, what I want, I don't want to be cynical at all because absolutely anybody with a brain cell watching this doesn't want what's about to happen. But I want to start, you're a Palestinian living in Israel. That's fascinating for me. But I just, I want to start with what happened three weeks ago. We all crave peace, but those horrific attacks, uh, this started that I'm not... Uh, we'll get on to the next bit. That came from nowhere. Were you expecting that? What does that tell you about Hamas? What are your feelings about the terrorist organisation Hamas? That would be my first question. It's amazing to me um, how, uh, you know, I, I have Jewish colleagues um, uh, who go on, on these kind of shows and they are never, ever, ever expected to condemn the atrocities being conducted by the Israeli regime against the Palestinians uh, for the last decades. And uh, what is that, that extreme retaliation that is happening now? And it's amazing to me how, as a Palestinian, I'm always expected to react to um, uh, what Hamas has did. Yes, <laughs> I deeply condemn uh, uh, what Hamas did. I don't think anyone has expected uh, this, uh, obviously. Um, uh, saying that it came out of nowhere is obviously uh, not really uh, true. Um, um, we do, uh, you know, uh, uh, know uh, that what is happening is out of a very much larger uh, context. Um, the uh, attack that happened is absolutely unjustifiable. Mm. Um, and when we need to stand and talk about it, uh, we need to condemn Hamas, just like we need to condemn and harshly critique the Israeli regime for the last several decades, but especially the current government that has openly you know, uh, 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 politicians who are openly calling for the annihilation uh, of Gaza and of Palestinians, who are openly, uh, you know, sending, backing um, a settler terror in the West Bank right now um, and are maintaining a very, very violent uh, control over the Palestinian people. Now, I am here to tell you that we that's exactly what we're trying to hold, which I think in many ways uh, you guys are failing to hold. This kind of duality um, that really understands that while we are talking about Hamas as a terrorist group and con condemning harshly again and again as we must the attacks that we endured as Israeli society here in Israel, we need to acknowledge the Israeli regime and the oppressive Israeli regime and the 
catastrophe that is being conducted right now in Gaza and Sami. in the West Bank. Sami. We are talking about persecution, political persecution of, poli of, of, of Palestinians here within Israel. Our solidarity towards our people and it's being criminalized. We are being fired from our jobs, expelled from universities, arrested for posting things about Gaza, not about Hamas, mm -hmm. not about the occupation, about Gaza and its people and its children. Can it's I, nearly 2,000 no, no, dead children, and go. that's being criminalized. Sally, can I just so ask? I'm trying to understand. No, no, I have one more thing. Sure. What we're trying to do here at Standing Together is holding that duality, the devastation of human loss that we're both feeling, Israelis and Palestinians, and you need to do the same and play by those rules and condemn both both sides that are responsible for these catastrophes. I understand. Sally, can you help us out here and give a bit of context as to what life was like for people living in Gaza for the past few years, but prior to the, the horrendous attacks that happened on, on October 7th. We just want to, I just want to personally understand what was already going on in Gaza for innocent civilians and what life was like for them, as you said it, under the Israeli government. Um, I, I'm not sure I can uh, give you a full testimony, you know, no one can go into or out of Gaza. So the only people who can tell you the experience of Gaza are actually people who live in Gaza. But I can tell you that, uh, you know, people who are 18 years old right now in Gaza have endured eight attacks eight wars, bombardings. We're talking about right now, as of today, we woke up to the most escalated attack, 50%. Uh, there's an estimate that 50% of the houses in Gaza are now ruined. So over 1 million people are now homeless without electricity and without water, with very few food. We're talking about um, a siege that is being controlled. The calories are being controlled. That calories intake of an individual person in Gaza is being controlled by the, by the Israeli government. The calories intake is being controlled by the Israeli Sally, uh, final army. question, final question and from me. Can I just one final question? You're not question? interested to, to listen to, you asked me how, how people are doing in Gaza and I'm trying to, to explain. No, okay. I get that. Can I ask you a quick question? And, and, and I, I absolutely support the fact that we should look at both sides. But I we have, have to... to let her finish. Okay, go on, carry on. No, no, I no, I, you, I, I wanted to give you like a very uh, brief, uh, rea you know, what what's the reality? You have uh, over a fifty to sixty percent unemployment rate because there is no, uh, uh, you know, you have an average of four hours of electricity in Gaza. Uh, Ninety-five percent of people don't have access to clean water. Uh, most of them don't have, you know, they can't go out or in of Gaza. So that's that's a very very brief. Um, a, a reality that I think is unfathomable and should not be acceptable to anyone for the last 18 years. Okay, Sally, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's 8.15.